Well, welcome to today's daily service. I'm really glad that you could join in. I hope you're doing well where you sit today. And I'm grateful that you've chosen to engage our service today. It may be early where you sit and watch right now, but do engage right from the start. I've chosen a responsive reading to help us respond all together to God. Just a few words from the prophet Isaiah pointing us to him. I'll read these portions of Isaiah 45, which say uh, leader, and if you could join in on those which say all. Turn to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn, my mouth has uttered in all integrity a word that will not be revoked before me every knee will bow. By me, every tongue will swear. They will say of me, in the Lord alone are deliverance and strength. Let's pray. Father, we're grateful for the chance to um, turn to your word and to turn toward you. We pray in thanksgiving that your presence is with us right where we sit, as we do our best to quote-unquote gather in your name. Please, Lord, would you help your presence be known to us? We say that you alone are our deliverance and strength, and we put our trust in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I trust you've been tuning into our daily services thus far this week, and if you have been, you'll know that we've been looking at Paul's wonderful prayer uh, for the Colossian believers, recorded in the first chapter of his letter to them. Since we're at the middle of the week, let's take a uh, step back and read the whole passage together that we've been looking at piece by piece this week, uh, even though we'll just be focusing on verse 11 today. I'll read the whole passage. You just listen in. Colossians chapter 1, beginning at verse 9. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we have not stopped praying for you. We continually ask God to fill you with the knowledge of his will, through all the wisdom and understanding that the Spirit gives, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, so that you might have great endurance and patience, and giving joyful thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of his holy people in the kingdom of light. For he has rescued us from the mid-dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the Son he loves, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And our verse for today, again, verse 11, being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, so that you may have great endurance and patience. Early on into lockdown, I was phoning around uh, to some of the members who are a part of the city congregation, the, the, uh, the congregation of St. Tabs, which I have the privilege of helping lead. And I was speaking to one woman who's a part of our congregation. Her name is Sybil, and a, a, a woman older in years who's had a lot of experience. And I was amazed by her sense of calm <laughs> amidst the, the current crisis, her perspective. And as I asked questions, she began to speak about her uh, youth under World War II. She remembers as a young girl, uh, uh, bomb shelters and air raid sirens and being moved to other parts of England away from her family so that she might have her education in a safer place than the one where her family lived. A crisis that lasted not as long as coronavirus has lasted for us so far, but for six years, World War II. Her sense of perspective and the need for endurance, for perseverance something we need now as this uh, three-tiered approach to local lockdown has just been released earlier this week you can feel a groan we're still fighting this as news of uh, various vaccine trials being 
understandably pause, as one would expect. Nonetheless, we feel a groan. We're still fighting this and a need for us to pull together and to persevere and to each do what we can do to suppress this virus and overcome this challenge as we look ultimately to God. But I wonder if you've considered recently that that perseverance is needed, that gritty spirit is needed in our Christian life as well. Look at what Paul assumes about the Christian life. Being strengthened with all power according to his glorious might so that you might have great endurance and patience. There'll be a need in any mature believer's life to go through seasons, maybe even years, where there's a sense of just needing to persevere in their faith. I remember when I was a young believer, I'd just come to Christ at the age of 19. The Lord gave me such an emotional experience of his presence. At times it was like I was breathing out and he was breathing in. The sense of joy and connection was there. But over time, the Lord seemed to withdraw that and I wondered what was going on. Had I done something wrong? But it was really as if the Lord was drawing the babe off his mother's milk and helping him to grow to rely on solid food. But early on, I needed to persevere in my walk with God. And that's true for each of us. If we have the idea that the Christian life will most often be kind of a stroll on green hills under beautiful sunlit skies, looking over calm seas, we'll quickly become disillusioned there's a call, an expectation that we'll need to endure in our faith with great patience. But if that's true, is it kind of as if we have to pull up our bootstraps and just get on with it and do our best to persevere and, and will ourselves through until, until the end and we cross the finish line and Christ either comes again or we die and, and go into his uh, presence and, and await the resurrection. Well, no. It's not as if uh, uh, someone were just to say to me, Andy, go run a marathon. And if I right now were to go run a marathon and just think I'm going to persevere through it, I can tell you in my own strength, what would I make it past? Maybe the 10 kilometer mark. I'm sure many of you would do much better, but I wouldn't make it far. An attitude of perseverance wouldn't need be enough. I would need the means of perseverance. And wonderfully in our Christian life, there's not only a call to persevere, there's the provision provided to endure in our faith. And that provision doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from God. We're told that we're to pray for one another as believers, that we would be strengthened with all power, from whom? According to his glorious might. Think about God's glory, the emanation of his who he is, on display for humans and angelic beings to see. His glory, the glory of his strength, it's from that wellspring of power that we each draw upon as Christians to endure in the Christian life. That's a message of hope. The Apostle Paul, writing to the Ephesians, about the same time that he wrote to the Colossians, prayed it this way. I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened, in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you, the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people, and his incomparably great power for us who believe. Open our eyes to see this power. What is that power? Paul goes on to pray for the Ephesians. That power is the same as the mighty strength he exerted when he raised Christ from the dead, and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly realms, far above all rule and authority, power and dominion, and every name that has been given. That's the power that's available to you and to me in our Christian lives as we seek to persevere in our faith in Christ. So friend, if you feel overwhelmed by your struggle with sin, if you feel your external, external circumstances are swamping you and threaten to drown your hope in Christ, persevere. Draw other Christians around you, share with them the need, and have them pray that you'd be strengthened 
according to the power that God has given you in Christ, the very same power which raised him up from the grave has been given to you by God's Spirit. Take heart. We'll turn to God in prayer now and pray a prayer for perseverance. Would you join me in praying? I'll say the first part of the prayer, and then would you join in aloud on the second part? Father, I bless and thank you for a brand new day and for the fresh opportunities and challenges that this day will bring. Thank you that your mercies are new every morning. I pray that I will walk worthy of you today and be a faithful witness in thought, word, and deed, demonstrating a Christ-like attitude to all who, whom I come into contact with. And together, keep me every fo ever focused on you, Lord, and keep my heart steadfastly trusting you for all my needs and necessities. Help me not to function in my own strength, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. May I stand firm in the truth of the gospel of grace and remain steadfastly looking to Jesus, trusting in him to supply his sufficient strength for all occasions. Teach me all that you would have me learn today and give me the courage and strength to press on toward the goal for the upward call in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And now we'll sing a song that will have us focus on the Lord. Be thou my vision, not just today, but every day, on to the time when we go to meet with him. Let's sing together.
Well, thanks so much for joining today, and we'll go with the words of the grace. Let's say them aloud together. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. Go in peace.